It's hard to miss that five-story white-tipped tower that juts out of the much shorter building located at the top of Liberty Street near Baxter. The Eclipse Woolen Mill started life at this location just after the Civil War, and if walls could talk, you would hear stories of sweat, conflict, and disappointment that occurred here. The woolen mill employed hundreds to weave a heavy-duty fabric to make Kentucky jeans, the popular 19th-century work pants worn by farmers and factory workers. The majority of the employees at the mill were women and children who labored in sweatshop conditions, long hours, unpredictable shutdowns, low wages, and the heat, lint, and noise of hundreds of looms. There was always a fire danger, and in fact, that tower, now topped by a giant radio antenna, was added in the 1890s to house a 12,000-gallon water tank that gave oomph to the sprinkler system. For most of its life, the woolen mill came right up to Garden Street, later Chestnut Street extended, until that part of Chestnut was relocated, widened, and connected to Liberty, causing the old mill today to sit back off the street. Looking back, there had been occasional labor problems at the Eclipse Mill throughout the 1870s and the early 1880s, but things came to a dramatic head in July of 1887 when the entire workforce, led by 256 women, surprised management by walking off the job, demanding a wage increase and the right to bargain collectively. The walkout quickly spread to two other Louisville woolen mills involving a total of over 600 workers. The strikers had affiliated with the Hard-Nosed Knights of Labor Union while the mill proprietors band together and named an owner of the Eclipse Mill, the uncompromising Silas Miller, their public spokesperson. Now, as an aside, early in life, Miller was a well-regarded riverboat captain, later a popular manager of the landmark Galt House Hotel, and by the 1880s, one of Louisville's wealthiest citizens. Incidentally, soon after Silas Miller's death, his palatial mansion on West Broadway became the first home of the University of Louisville's College of Arts and Sciences. Now, as the labor conflict in the 1887 year dragged on from days to months, the mill owners, after offering a modest wage increase, upped the ante. An oath never to join a union again became the litmus test for returning to work. That demand only deepened sympathy among supporters of the walkout, prompting a September rally at Phoenix Hill Beer Garden located just around the corner from the Eclipse Mill on Baxter. The Courier-Journal reported that 6,000 people showed up at the rally to raise money for the strike fund, and double that number bought tickets in financial support. The women strikers wore small blue ribbons on their dresses as a show of solidarity. Sadly, as Christmas approached, the Knights of Labor could no longer pay replacement benefits and the holdouts either limped back to work after signing the pledge or lost their jobs. The looms at Eclipse were finally silenced after the factory was acquired in 1906 by two investors, including Henry Bickle, one of the city's leading road builders who had an office and storage area nearby. 
Ultimately, Bickle became the sole owner of the old mill and after 1915 adapted the whole complex to house construction supplies and machinery and to sell building materials to the public. Beginning in 1925, his direct sales operation was called American Builder Supply and known across the city. In 1977, the Bickle family turned their headquarters, construction supply depot, and yard into a modern office building. Later, that old mill was sold and has had several tenants, including a rail signal company, a medical technology incubator, and today, an engineer and planning firm, as well as a designer and manufacturer of medical devices. Things are pretty calm now at the head of Liberty Street, but old newspapers, maps, and photos tell of a very different time. The walls of the 151-year-old Eclipse Woolen Mill still speak of sweatshop conditions, challenges to management, and bitter disappointment for the workers who lost their struggle for a better life. Well, thanks for watching. I'm pedaling off now in search of the next installment of Hometown Louisville with Tom Owen.